Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at the Windsor Star News Cafe. We are here today to discuss the wonderful upcoming book festival, Book Fest Windsor 2014, which begins tomorrow, Thursday, October 23rd, and continues to Sunday, October 26th. On the panel today, I'd like to introduce to you some fabulous people who have all contributed and participated so much to small presses and the literary community of Windsor. Uh, to start off with, I've got Marty Gervais to my left. He is the creator, founder, uh, contributor of Black Moss Press. He's a photographer, a journalist, a poet, a historian, a teacher, man of many hats, uh, Windsor's first poet laureate. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for being Good to here. Be here. Good to be here. Glad to have you. We have a, a wonderful lady of many hats. We have Lenore Langs, who is the co-founder of Cranberry Tree Press, along with Lori Smith. She is a teacher, she's a published poet, she's had many pieces published. She also teaches an expository writing course online at the University of Windsor. Thank you for joining us, Lenore. You're welcome, Julia. <laughs> we also have uh, Dr. Carl Jurgens. He is the editor of Rampike Magazine since 1979. Rampike is an international literary journal of postmodern art and writing, and he will be discussing with us not just small presses, but also um, an event that you have coming up. When is that? Sure. Uh, that's the following day, actually, uh, uh, at the Artsite Gallery. Speaking of hats, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be doing a performance on hats, and if people wear an unusual hat to the event, which starts at 7 o'clock, Artsite Gallery, free admission, then they could win a prize. So, but uh, it'll be fun. Uh, it'll be featuring Gary Barwin, who's uh, an internationally known poet and intermedia artist. And to my far left, we have Ted Shaw, entertainment writer for the Windsor Star, who I know is totally pumped, rip rare and to go for this book fest, aren't you? I wish it. I wish it were now. <laughs> I can't wait. Almost can't one wait. more day. One more day. So let's talk about small presses, everyone. We're celebrating small presses in Windsor um, as a part of Book Fest on Thursday. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the Capitol, we're having a small press celebration. So let's talk about um, all of your knowledge. Spill it on to us. What do you know about small presses? How you got started? How it's evolved in this digital age? Who wants to go first? Maybe I could jump in. Uh, the idea with the small press event uh, was one that I came up with when I was serving on the board for the uh, Bookfest uh, Windsor group and uh, we thought it would be really good to bring in some of the local presses because we've got uh, presses from across Canada represented and I said well we're doing a lot right here right now so why not introduce these people so we're gonna have five presses we're gonna have Palimpsest, Cranberry Tree, Black Moss as well as uh, Biblioasis and then Rampike Magazine uh, so uh, the idea behind it was uh, people can come out uh, listen to one author being represent, representing each one of the five presses, or publishers I should say, and uh, listen to them for about 10 minutes each. We'll have a little break and then there's going to be a question and answer period following that where the audience can ask the publishers how to get published, how to start a press, how to start a magazine, or what is involved in actually getting their work out there. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, an information session among other things for aspiring writers. And that's one of that's the main thing all of you have in common. You help establish a platform for new and emerging writers alongside seasoned, experienced, established writers. Yes, I guess we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who'd like to go first? I will. All right. <laughs> uh, Laurie Smith and I, about 16 years ago, were running uh, a poetry event out at the Sandwich Mill on the west side. And we, this went on for most of the year, and we had a lot of writers from Detroit and Windsor there. And it was such a good event, and the writers were so good, we thought, wouldn't it be nice if we made a book with all these writers in? So we did. Mm -hmm. And we had a reading, and we sold the book, and then we said, that was quite a bit of fun, you know? I think we should do this again. So we decided to start a publishing company, and we did. But because we didn't want to have to apply for grants to get money to run it, and we didn't want to have to go out on promotion and sell the books, we became a publishing service instead. So the writers come to us, those people we accept are published, but then it's up to them to go out and sell the books, and we have no more to do with them at that point. 
Lenore, if I can jump in. It's not a vanity press, Cranberry oh, Tree. No, no, not at all. Uh, most of the people who send us submissions, we have to say, well, we don't think you're ready yet. Maybe it would be good if you joined a writer's group or something like that. We're very selective about who we take. You have an international catalog of, of writers, do you not? We do. We have quite a few U.S. writers. We mm -hmm. have a poet from California. We have a poet from Virginia, some people from Detroit. Oh. Vancouver, Northern Ontario. It has really taken off it has. in the 16 years. It has. <laughs> and Marty, you've been around for, well, well geez, as long we, as I can remember. We, we started uh, Black Moss in uh, uh, 1969. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started it on Dougal Avenue here in Windsor. Uh, and my desire to get into publishing was to publish some authors who I thought should be in print. And they weren't getting into print. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were people uh, like David Donnell, uh, who ended up winning the Governor General's Award, Ted Plantos, uh, uh, and Sean O'Higgin. These were, these were friends of mine, or became friends of mine. And, um, and Sean ended up winning the Governor General's Award as well, and we ended up publishing that book. Um, so it was really, my wife and I, uh, my wife Donna and I actually starting it with a magazine called Black Moss. And we were publishing in those in the first issues of those magazines. There are names that you will re certainly know. Uh, there's no doubt that you will know, like Margaret Atwood yes. and um, Irving Layton and Michael Andache, uh, all of whom were contributing to our magazine. And and uh, at that point in time, Michael Andache was just really beginning um, his career as a writer and uh, publishing a little bit with Coach House Press. So that was our roots. We had a, an old Gestetner. Um, mimeograph machine that we were using on the attic apartment it was right in the middle of, you know, we had a new baby and, and the Gestetner going at the same time one was screaming and the other one was screaming in a different kind of way. So <laughs> that was our beginnings and it was because I felt that some of these people should get published. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why I did it. And eventually it evolved into um, small chapbooks and then um, properly you know, printed books. Uh, as I say, initially it would be small books of, you know, 32 pages or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and then suddenly we were doing 10 or 12 books a year. And we're still, we're still doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl, you've brought in a couple of uh, uh, samples of Rampike, uh, the literary um, journal that you do or uh, magazine. Tell us about how this uh, magazine <laughs> began and uh, how, how it's evolved. Well, uh, Rampike began about uh, 35 years ago. I was uh, quite young at the time and I, I didn't see enough uh, venues for innovative contemporary writing in Canada. A lot of it was fairly conservative and I thought a little boring. So um, we kicked off Rampike uh, originally at the Ontario College of Art and Design but uh, since then it's moved around to wherever I've gone and I've been to several um, post-secondary institutions including University of Toronto, York, Laurentian and now U Windsor. And um, we have published a, an international consortium of top name authors, people like William Burroughs, Paul Oster, Russell Banks, uh, but we like to include uh, uh, superstars of the local region, so people like um, Alistair MacLeod of course, uh, Nino Ricci, who will be at the Book Fest uh, this Saturday to uh, pay tribute to Alistair MacLeod for the event that starts at roughly 8 o'clock uh, at the Capitol Theatre, uh, along with a, a group of many other writers who will be paying tribute to Alistair. And uh, we've published also uh, people like Phil Hall, who uh, began here in Windsor, won a Governor General's Award. And so we, we've spread it out. Uh, the mag's distributed internationally across the world and uh, it's still running so we're trying to include uh, both uh, uh, local uh, growing young writers and established ones side by side let the audience figure out which one they like the best you know <laughs> and uh, i think they're all exciting now each of these uh, small presses has has its own character um, what are you looking for as an editor in uh, submissions to Rampike? i like to look for something that's a little bit cutting edge uh, slightly innovative, but uh, I always look for a combination where 
the form of the writing matches the subject matter. So somehow the two have to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you can write a really good story, but in a, a mediocre style, it won't cut it. And vice versa, you can have excellent style, but a mediocre topic, again, no good. You gotta have them both. And Lenore, how about Cranberry Tree Press? So are there certain things that you look for in a, in a potential author? Good writing, that's mainly what we look for. It's kind, of, it's kind of a common denominator, isn't it? Yeah, we publish a lot of different things. We've done memoir, we've done poetry, novels, creative nonfiction, family histories, as long as it's well written, we'll look at it. Marty? Uh, I mean, we publish badly written stuff, right? Yeah, <laughs> we only publish the bad stuff. Uh, like Crad Kolodny, we yeah. <laughs> put together anthologies of the worst Canadian poetry. <laughs> um, no, actually, there's an emphasis that we have in our press. It's not, um, it's not exclusive. But one of the things that we're interested in is, is literature from southwestern Ontario, and really the influence of that. I mean, I've always had a great interest in the Windsor Essex region. But um, James Rainey from uh, from London, he and I. Um, got together and we did we did a play called Baldoon and it was through James Rainey's influence that I had this uh, and he, he, he coined the phrase you know Southwesto mm -hmm. and uh, so I've always had this interest in southwestern Ontario so when I look at some of the writers for example who are coming to um, Bookfest I mean a couple of local writers uh, Dorothy Mahoney's a, a moderator and uh, she did a wonderful book with Black Moss uh, on Point Pelee and uh, Peter Rostovic, who's a, a lawyer in town, but also uh, an excellent poet. And a lot of his work, you know, uh, really kind of refers to the family and, and, and also in this region. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so many of the authors have that kind of uh, sensibility. And that's one of the things that we're looking for, is good writing about and based in southwestern Ontario. I'm curious, how do all of you know when a piece is ready to be published? Like what makes a good piece of writing polished, fine-tuned? How do you know that it's, it's done, it's good to go, leave it alone, don't make any more edits to it? How do you know, like, how do you know for Ram Pike? That, that'll be uh, probably one of the things we'll be talking about uh, tomorrow evening. Um, we, we've published people who are really good theorists, such as uh, Linda Hutchin. Uh, and uh, w one of the things she looks for, uh, and uh, as we do, is uh, that integration of stylistics and subject matter. So when it's clicking, it's clicking. And you can usually tell after a number of years as an editor if something is out of place. And so I'll, I'll, I'll occasionally suggest a, a small change to uh, an author and I'll say, well, is this the way you really meant to put it? And, and they'll sometimes revise it. Um, one of the more interesting authors that we featured is Nicole Brossard, uh, mm -hmm. who's out of Quebec. And she's very unusual, very challenging, but her stylistics are exquisite. She, she's uh, what I would call neo-baroque uh, in, in the intricacy of her style, uh, quite brilliant. And so it, it really gets challenging for an editor to read through that depth of writing or that complexity and recognize it as, uh, as near perfect as possible. Uh, other forms are, are uh, also um, uh, welcome in the magazine, so we've, we've published Susan Holbrook, who is uh, a prof at the U, who will be uh, our reader, mm -hmm. and uh, she's she's done uh, very innovative work, uh, but very amusing. She's fun, uh, she's clever, she's witty, uh, but uh, her stylistics are are near perfect, you know. And uh, somehow you just have a sense that everything's working in harmony, and uh, the subject matches the form. So we're always looking for that sense of decorum, uh, and when it's working, you know it's working. Mm -hmm. It's the same in music or dance, you know, you can tell right away. Yeah. Le okay. Lenore, uh, I, was gonna, I was gonna mention, you, you were telling me earlier about a, a, a writer that you discovered, a minor? Uh... Yes, and I was just thinking I should put a PS back on what do we look for when we decide who to publish. Sometimes we're just looking for a good story. And there's a mining engineer who we have published, and he has all kinds of wonderful stories. We're working on his second book now. We have to catch him in between trips to Indonesia or Arizona because he's always going somewhere. But one of the things that we have to look at when we're editing him is keep his voice 
but still edit it, but don't come out sounding like Lori and Lenore. We mm -hmm. still want it to sound like our mining engineer. Right. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's it, when the writing sort of, sort of knocks your socks off, and mm -hmm. um, and you know, hearing what, what Carl was saying, I I think when all the when all of those elements are working together, it's what Leonard Cohen calls being in a state of grace. Mm -hmm. And and as a writer. Sometimes you write something and you know it's good. I mean, it may it may require a little bit of editing, but you know everything is clicking. Like all the planets in the universe have lined themselves up for you. And I think as an editor, you see the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a woman from Sar uh, Sarnia, Debbie Oaken Hill, and she sent me some uh, some poems um, that are have a sports theme. Mm -hmm. She sent them actually to the Windsor Review magazine. But I was so taken with them. They were and they virtually required no editing. I mean, they were so clean and perfect. And what it led to was a book that we just did called Tarnished Trophies. I, I wrote to her and said, do you have any more poems like this? And uh, so and she apparently just very quietly was working away on a, a whole host of uh, poems with sports themes. And, uh, and then we did some editing. Then we, it was a matter of, seeing what should go in the book, what should stay out. Right. And but otherwise the poems are so clean and uh, so perfectly, you know, formed. Uh, and you know that as an editor, you know that as a writer. Mm -hmm. Is there anything and this is directed at the three of you, okay. is there anything that you will not publish, that you absolutely <laughs> refuse to publish? I once turned down a story by a, a fairly famous Canadian author uh, because it was on necrophilia. And I, I, I didn't. I didn't want to run it. I just thought it was in bad taste. Later on, it was turned into a motion picture, and it was actually done reasonably well. Uh, but it was something I didn't want to get involved with. So, right. yeah. <laughs> we turned down one by a, a Canadian author who's also known, and it was a book of poetry about Clifford Olson, and we didn't want to publish that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, no comment. How, how okay. <laughs> on that note, uh, what impact do you think, and we'll, we'll wrap this up uh, quickly here, but what impact do you think having such successful, well-known, high-profile, yet small presses in this community, what impact has that had on Windsor as a literary community and Windsor's profile in, uh, in Canada? Do you think it... I mean, t to me, having those five presses in this city certainly opens up all kinds of options to writers. I mean, I have a novel sitting in my drawer. You know, I'm, I'm going to certainly start with the local uh, with the local press first. But uh, has has it inspired people to sort of come out of the woods, out of the woodwork, so to speak, and uh, come forward? Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, I. I came here in, in 1968, and um, and there was uh, Eugene McNamara was at the University of Windsor. He started the Windsor Review magazine, and uh, they had a small press operating at that time. And so it was um, it was Eugene McNamara, Len Gasparini, Dorothy Farmelo, and and it was a very lively community. And we used to do readings at the Dominion House, and it was a very lively, rich community. And so for me to come into Windsor at that time, it was uh, I was encouraged, you know, to start uh, a magazine and start uh, a publishing company, and um, because, I think because Windsor is so welcoming and like that. But I think the impact is that we have a very lively because of those, you know, early days of the 19 uh, of the late 60s, with starting with Eugene McNamara. I think it's we have a very lively, rich literary community, and, and so. We're blessed, I think, and you know, if you're an author and you're growing up in Windsor and you wanted to get published, you have the option of coming out like tomorrow night, for example, and finding out about more about our presses and what's available to you if you're a poet or a novelist or if you have a memoir that you want to publish. There, there, there is a venue and there's an opportunity for you to talk to us firsthand. And I think and all of us uh, as publishers and as editors of magazines, we're all very accessible and very generous with our time. And uh, so it's a great community for that purpose. It, it, I think a community is defined by its stories. 
and by what it says to the rest of the world. And so this is part of the Windsor cultural identity. And uh, you know, I just want to say thanks to people like you, Ted, and, and Julian, who are covering this kind of material in the presses. I know it through your reportage, reportage uh, Marty, uh, with your work on editing, publishing Lenore. Uh, she's very modest, she hasn't mentioned it, but she was the, the director for the Book Fest for over 10 years and one of the main uh, forces behind it. Dan Wells helped kick it off and he's with Biblioasis and in 10 years he's built that into a major press uh, to be reckoned with, in fact. Uh, across not only Canada but uh, the world. So uh, we've got an energy vortex here that's uh, created by people who are, are willing to put in the time. And uh, it's, it's a, a nice thing to see that a, a city like Windsor can uh, come up with something like this. So I hope it'll continue. Uh, the next phase, I think, uh, for people would be to move to the digital front because uh, we're talking largely paper here, but not entirely. Uh, some of our presence is online, but I, I think the next generation will move into the digital realm and that'll be a whole new exciting world and people should pursue that as well. Okay. Ted, is there any? Okay. I'm fine. All right. <laughs> well, before we, we wrap up, I'd like to emphasize Bookfest Windsor uh, once again because there's so many wonderful events as a part of this festival coming up and I'd like to be able to mention all of them. I can't mention all of them in our they, they limited online. time. <laughs> there is a lot. I mean, but we do have an online presence and you can find out about it just by going to uh, exactly. Bookfest Windsor 2014. Yeah. Bookfestwindsor.com or Bookfest Windsor 2014? Just, just, type, just Google Bookfest Windsor 2014 okay. and it'll all be there. Okay, yeah. so we've got Carl's event Friday night a fast words reading performance. Wear a hat. Wear a hat. <laughs> what kind of hat? Any hat? Which the is wildest hat, hat you got because the okay. funniest or strangest hat will win a prize. I won't say what the prize is, but there will be a prize. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, it'll be a modest prize, but still. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Maybe okay. a copy of Ram No, it'll be better than that, <laughs> which is already pretty good. You know? <laughs> Uh, the Rampikes will be launched there. The latest issue will be launched. Oh, great. Good yeah. to know. And the, the Alistair uh, tribute is a, a big deal. I think yeah. people should... Is that also on Saturday? That's Saturday That's evening. Saturday. Yeah. 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 Saturday night, we've got the tribute to Alistair McLeod. We also have a Running the Border. Local and inter international writers will be discussing stories from Windsor and Detroit. That is with uh, Wayne Grady, Scott Martell, Ted McClelland, and Sean McAuliffe. And then on Sunday, to wrap up, from 11 to 2, we've got Books and Brunch. So if you're hungry for knowledge, hungry for food, check it out, 11 to 2 on Sunday at the Capitol. Art Gallery of Windsor. Oh, pardon me, sorry. Thank you, good catch. Art Gallery of Windsor. Art Gallery, yeah. And for more information, visit windsorstar.com or bookfestwindsor2014.com. And to wrap it up, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Well, check out the visual narrative, the graphic comics section on Saturday. Okay. Uh, there's going to be a poetry section that's going to be really exciting. So all kinds of wonderful stuff at the fest this year. And we can't forget Louise Welsh. Francophone, too. Oh, Louise Welsh. That's the crime true. writer? Uh, yes. Are you she, moderating that, Ted? Uh, I am. Okay. Um, she is a Scottish uh, thriller writer, a wonderful book called A Lovely Way to Burn. Uh, you'll have to read Tomorrow's Windsor Star to find out where the title comes from, because it's a rather whimsical title about a very, very horrifying subject. Uh, so don't miss tomorrow's Windsor Star scene page. And, that, and that's thanks to the International Festival of Authors in Toronto, so we have to give them a thank you as well. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful event. Thank you for joining us on the panel today. It was lovely having you here. Thanks Great. very much. Thank, thank you, you for inviting us. Yeah. Thank you for coming. It was fun.